Hello everyone, it is me, Amanda Tweeten, the Chief Operating Officer for Aero Senior Living, and I am sitting down with you today to talk a little bit about my reason for choosing to get the vaccination, the COVID-19 vaccine. When the vaccination was first announced, I'll be honest, I was not of the mindset that I was going to be taking the vaccine. I am someone that typically does not like going to the doctor. I don't enjoy going to the dentist. Um, getting the flu shot is quite the the um, production for me. But for whatever reason, I just allow myself to have anxiety when it comes to medical type things. And so, of course, even considering taking the vaccine is just like, if I am constantly looking for reasons not to go to the doctor, why in the world would I purposely sign up to take a vaccine? Um, however, um, uh, people in my life that I love and respect and, um, believe to be very, very smart people, um, were all signing up to take the vaccine. And, um, this is kind of silly, but, um, I don't know how many of you guys have seen The Notebook with Ryan Gosling, but there was a moment where I was talking to my significant other and um, we were talking about the vaccination and my significant other was like, well, I'm taking the vaccine. And I instantly went to a clip or the scene in The Notebook where Ryan Gosling is in the ocean and um, the girl that his cat, his love interest, his counterpart is like, I'm a bird. And he's like, well, if you're a bird, I'm a bird. And as silly as that sounds, that's kind of exactly what happened in my head. And I was like, if you're getting it, then I'm getting it. And so I didn't even really think about it. Um, and so I say all of that to you to say this, the minute that I made the decision to get the vaccine, um, there was just this shift in my life, if you will. Uh, for the last almost year, I've been living a very um, closed off life. I mean, like literally I go from work to our office back to, or I go from home to the office back to the house. And my circle is very, very, very small. It consists of the people that I work with um, and our office was shut down. I think there were only like four or five people on my floor that would come in and we all had separate office spaces. Uh, we weren't going out to dinner anymore with our friends. Uh, I wasn't seeing my family and we didn't go to the grocery store. Uh, food was delivered. And like, again, world was very, very small when the pandemic hit. And so at the idea that I could take the vaccine and I could feel more confident to go out into the world, um, that changed some things for me. Uh, I started to get really excited. I've started planning a trip to meet up with my family. After we've taken the vaccine, we're going to rent a little house and um, by the ocean and we're going to all go and be together, which will be the first time that that has happened in quite a while. I know that there are other people um, across the country who have been um, going and doing those things, but I have not felt confident to do them. Uh, and so for me, I'm very excited at the idea that life could go back to normal. And then I think the only other thing that kind of hit me is that as we're seeing our numbers continue to climb, I think uh, not too long ago, we hit 400,000 people who had passed away from COVID. Um, and every day I'm hearing stories of people, um, my grandmother's hairdresser passing away, or um, one of our executive director's mother's passing away, or um, I watched Sophie's video. If you haven't seen Sophie's video from a couple, um, I think a week ago, um, I didn't even know the story that her mom and her grandmother had passed away. But um, I just, it feels so much closer. Um, it feels closer every day. Um, stories are feeling closer and closer of people, um, people I know who have passed away or people who know people who have passed away. And I'm and people I know who have gotten very sick from the disease, not just like they, they got COVID and they had a little cold, but they got COVID and it wiped them out for months and not being able to like even have a Zoom conversation because the exertion of using their voice for that long wouldn't be something that they could do. And 
again, all of that terrifies me to no end. And um, I was uh, talking with our CEO, Stephanie, the other day um, about just like the vaccine and what it means. And uh, one of the things that she said was she's like, as you look at as you look at our options, as we deal with COVID-19, um, it's like, what other option do we have? I mean, we've been told to wear masks. We've been told to uh, physically distance from each other, um, wash our hands, um, wear pro proper um, PPE uh, to protect us. But like, that's, that's not a lifestyle that seems sustainable for years and years and decades. I mean, like that just doesn't seem realistic. And so, I mean, I feel like the vaccine is the first real legitimate solution to getting out of this. And so um, I had uh, someone in a meeting the other day uh, say, well, how do you know that the vaccine is 100% effective? Like, why would you take it if it's not 100% effective? And I didn't have an answer at the moment that they asked, but as the day progressed and um, other conversations happened, you know, uh, someone mentioned to me that uh, COVID, there's not a 100% guarantee that you know what's going to happen if you get COVID. I mean, it seems like this silent stalker, if anything, and you never know where it's going to hit and you never know how bad it's going to hit. And so... <sighs> I mean, I feel like it's unknown either way. You either can sit and wait and see how COVID will impact your life, or you can make a choice to take a vaccination. Um, and um, I'm not going to lie. I haven't done all of the research. I haven't read all the medical experts' opinions on the vaccine. Um, but people that I respect and I trust, um, who I believe are very smart, um, and even the medical experts are taking the vaccination. So if, if the person who makes the vaccine is taking the vaccine, that's enough for me. I don't, I don't need anything. I personally don't need anything more than that because at the end of the day, I'm more afraid of what COVID could do to me, um, than the vaccine. So I wish I could say it was this really profound moment that caused me to make the decision to take the vaccine, but really it was, um, the person I love and respect most in the world chose to take it. And if they're going to do it, I'm going to do it. And when I made that decision, there was just this weight that lifted off of me. I felt freer and I've never felt more excited to um, go out into the world and expand, expand from this little bubble that I've been living in for the last year. And I cannot wait. I cannot wait um, to see my sister. I cannot wait to see my nephew. I cannot wait to see my parents and hug my grandmother. Again, I've kept it very, very small um, in this last year. And the idea that I will get to go and spend time with them and, and not just spend time with them, but not be afraid to spend time with them, not be afraid that I would do something to them or that unbeknowingly they would pass something along to me is like a a weight that has just lifted off of me and I'm so excited. So that's my reason for taking the vaccination. Um, uh, I don't know that it's that compelling, but I wanted to share it with you here today. Um, I hope you all have a really wonderful rest of your day. And if you're one of those individuals that's still waiting to decide, um, I my thoughts are with you and um, I'm sending good and warm energy your way um, and hoping that um, that you that the right information finds you that gives you the confidence to make a choice that could save your life or someone else's. Have a good day.